If you are a video game person who has been online in any capacity in the last year, you probably heard of a game called Black Myth Wukong. This is one of those video games where you play as a monkey, so you already know it's a masterpiece before it even releases. The aforementioned monkey can hit people with a magical staff that can cast spells and stuff, and you have these big extravagant cinematic boss fights. Some critics are calling it Game of the Year material, which is a pretty good sign. It's got this crazy ass theme song that goes like... <laughs> And most importantly, some people are describing it as a Souls-like because it looks like a game where you can actually lose. The developers are naturally rejecting that label because they have this insane delusion that not every single game has to be compared to Dark Souls. It doesn't really matter what the game is actually about for the purposes of this video, other than to say that it looks really cool and one day I would very much like to play it. It comes out on August 20th, which is this Tuesday, so uh, yeah, that's pretty exciting. But there's just one problem. I still don't have a PS5, and my PC is using hardware that was manufactured roughly around the same time as the very Chinese mythology this game is based on. On top of this, I've seen some reports of performance issues even on computers that meet or exceed the recommended requirements. Just from the trailers alone, I was seeing some pretty sick looking graphics, some real Unreal 5 looking ass visuals, you know what I mean? The hair physics, the lighting, the vegetation and foliage, the reflections and volumetrics and all that stuff, it all looked kinda next gen as they love to say. Now obviously this is running in an ideal or at least adequate hardware environment, there was no way it could actually look like this on my computer, which got me thinking, would my computer run it at all? This is a question that I unfortunately have to ask myself about more and more games these days, and that's just how it is, you know, nothing is cutting edge forever. Now in the case of something like Forspoken or Starfield, I couldn't really give that much of a monkey's foreskin about whether or not I could play those, but Black Myth Wukong is a game that looks like it might actually be somewhat fun. But nothing would hurt more than buying the game just to find out that my computer wouldn't be able to run it in a satisfactory manner, if at all. That's when I heard about the Black Myth Wukong benchmarking tool. This is a free utility that they are giving away that you can download on Steam whether you own the game or not. It contains the menu for the graphics settings and a brief, very beautiful cinematic sequence demonstrating all kinds of graphical effects and settings, and at the end it gives you a performance review with a detailed list of all the settings that you changed and the average frame rate you're pushing. In my position, this is exactly what I needed. Now benchmarking tools are not a new thing, and this one isn't extraordinarily special on its own. There are all sorts of third-party softwares that can give you even more comprehensive information, and a lot of games actually come with them. Like Rockstar has been including benchmarking tools at least since GTA 5, maybe before. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure. And that's all well and good, but what's frustrating about those examples is that you still have to buy the game first to get access to those tools, and for people who are stuck on older hardware for now, they have to buy and install a whole ass game, potentially just to find out that maybe playing this game on this computer is not gonna be a good time, and maybe they should wait until they upgrade, or swallow their pride and get a console. With this free tool, I know well in advance without yet spending a single dollar on the game that a 1070 can actually run the game at 4K with max settings at 4 frames per second. Maybe I'll hold on to this computer a little longer. I've always appreciated those rare instances when game developers provide a free demo for their game so you actually know what you can expect from the full game because anybody who's played video games long enough will know that no matter how good the marketing for the game is, you can never know exactly what it's like to actually play it until it's in your hands and you are pressing the buttons. I've often thought that all games should give away free demos for that reason. But even though I'm not a game developer, logistically I can come up with some possible explanations as to why that's not always possible or practical to do in every situation. But if you asked me to come up with a reason not to provide a free benchmarking utility for a PC game so you can know before spending $70 on it and installing it on your computer whether or not it can actually run on your computer, 
that's a little more complicated. Because even if you think you're a hotshot geek squad tech genius who knows all the stats and all the bottlenecks and whatever, that doesn't automatically mean you'll know exactly how any game will run on your build until you actually take it for a spin. So that's why I say that ideally, every single game that comes to PC should have a free benchmarking utility. One that you can run before you throw your money at it. For them to offer this is a very conscientious move, especially in an age where games are becoming hugely demanding and subpar optimization measures have unfortunately become seemingly more common than not. And on the other hand, PCs are just extremely modular by nature. There are a lot of variables, so many possible permutations with respect to the hardware, and even one difference between builds can have huge impacts on performance one way or another. Another. When considering all these factors, it just kind of feels like common sense to offer something like this, although apparently it's not because this is the first time I can remember something like this being offered for a game for free. I'm sure it's not literally the first, but it's definitely uncommon. It should be common. My hope for the future is that we see more studios, especially big-ass studios making these lumbering quadruple-A titles make this a standard thing. Especially when they have the brass balls to charge $70 for their games. They won't.